I think will play an awful lot of guys, uh, partly because of uh, injury and partly because we just want to find out more about people, especially on special teams. And uh, we know this is going to be uh, – uh, a really good football game. Coach Took does a great job at SEMO. Uh, I've known about uh, his program in SEMO for a long time. And uh, they're a playoff team perennially in the FCS. Uh, they're probably the best team in the OBC this year. And they have really good talent. So we, we've got to play exceptional football uh, to give ourselves an opportunity to be successful. And um, that's the key for us is we, we've got to continue to push these young guys because um, they need to show up and, and play well on Saturday. We haven't talked to anybody yet to say, hey, you're going to redshirt. Um, there's probably some, some known names that are O-linemen, D-linemen that uh, um, need that year of development. Um, and there's a lot of positions that um, we're probably going to need to play, you know, just because of the depth and because of us learning more about guys. And um, some guys were here in the, in the spring that gives them an advantage. And, and other guys like Asa Newsom just showed up in June but was mature enough to uh, get into the depth chart. And we're excited about uh, those type of players because, um, you know, with the, the long haul of the season, you're going to need all of them. We don't have anybody out long term. Um, you know, uh, Duffy's the, the one that I know is not going to play uh, on, on Saturday. Um, and we hope to have him back in the next couple weeks. And whether or not that is Troy, whether or not that's Missouri, it's going to be t depending on how he uh, continues to progress. Uso is going to practice today, and I was not thinking that he would. Um, so we'll see how he can progress. He's been out a couple weeks, so we'll see what he can do. Um, but it's good to have him uh, back at practice today. Uh, Daniel Green practiced yesterday. Keegan practiced yesterday. Um, so we're gaining more and more bodies back which we need um, uh, just because some of those guys haven't practiced for a little bit. We've got to continue to, to work on our depth, but uh, also have to get you know some of these young guys ready to, ready to play significant roles. The new clock rules, we saw a little bit of it last week, how teams approached it, but what's your philosophy with the extra time running off after first downs? Do you see yourself – Going faster because of it, slower because of it, or no change? Um, I don't see any change. I think we'll see how it um, how it plays itself out here over these first few weeks. Um, but I don't see us changing. I, I mean, I know that games are going to be a little bit shorter, but I don't know how much shorter they're going to truly be when you add all the all the replays and and everything else that you have. So um, we'll have to play it by ear each week to see how it's how it's changed the game. What's yeah, the well, when Uso went down, those two kids took the, the lion's share of the reps, and uh, uh, Damian uh, is prepared and ready to go. He's watched Eli, you know, for a couple of years, and, and when his number was called, I don't care if it was a couple plays, he was always ready to go. So Damian's had a really good fall camp. Uh, Banks is learning how to do things our way, but he's really he's a he's a disruptive guy inside. I, I've been really impressed with Javon. I think he's going to have a tremendous year um, and splitting time in there with Damian, um, and then however much Uso can help us early on in the season. But uh, um, those two guys, you know, last year Eli was going to take eighty percent of the reps. This year we don't have to have that. We can we can move guys around and keep those guys fresh. Um, been really impressed with with Chris. Uh, he's had a, a a great camp. Um, you know, he's got his got a great focus, got a great mindset on things. Um, I see a more relaxed guy, uh, and uh, he's kicking the ball really well. But I just see a guy with confidence, with belief that. You know what? Um, he had a hiccup last year. Uh, he knows his ability. We all know his ability. Everybody on the team knows his ability, and so I I'm excited. I I'm excited for Chris. And an item or a phase of your team that you're kind of most intrigued to see for the first time when you guys are out there on Saturday? Secondary and receivers. You know, those are the two areas that um, you know everybody wants to see the running backs. Um, I think DJ Giddens is ready to roll. Uh, and I know Treshawn is too. Just our, our wide receivers. I think R.J. Garcia has had a tremendous fall camp. And you talk about confidence and belief. Um, that that guy's made play after play after play, and he knows our offense really well. And he's on a, he's on the same page with with Will. But I'm excited to see he and and Keegan and and um, Jaden Jackson and you know Phillips. 
going to be there. He's always been that steady phase and then uh, or steady uh, force for us. And then, um, you know, just the secondary, how we respond. Is there a plan or do you know what your approach will be with the back of a quarterback situation out of the gate? We'll play it out. We don't have a plan. Will Howard and then whoever's the next one that CK is ready to go with. <clears throat> Going off that a little bit, have you had a situation where I know he was here for spring, a true freshman come in and, and work his way to being an or for the, for the second string for, for quarterback? Uh, Easton Stick was when we had him up at, at NADSU, and, and he's with the Chargers now, so rightfully so. Um, Avery's done a really good job uh, of you know being here in the spring and learning as much as he can uh, and learning from Will and learning from Rubes and just – um, is having a really good fall camp, um, and so is so is Rubley, you know. And, and Jake missed a handful of days about a week ago, that maybe gave Avery some more reps to for us to see more and more of Avery. But then Rubes is back healthy, practiced last few days, and doing some really good things. Um, so we feel really comfortable at the quarterback spots. We we feel like um, you know that, that everybody knows that Will is is the guy. Um, but both the other two are competing every day for the number two job, and and um, we'll just see how it plays out. I, I can't I can't tell you how it will work um, if something happened to Will, uh, who would go in. You know, it's something that CK and I are, are really, you know, talking about on a daily basis. And, uh, to not to listen to the media, because <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean. It's there's a lot of great expectations out there, and I appreciate all you guys throwing those high expectations on those guys um, because they've earned the right because of what they did last year. Uh, but now we have to go prove it on the field, and um, there's a lot of guys that uh, hear of those expectations and hear of what was done and haven't done anything yet. You know that that are are in our too deep or are starting that haven't played for us yet. Uh, and so for, for those guys of gaining that experience and watching the, you know, watching the older guy in front of them, uh, how he prepares throughout this week, how he prepares on Friday, how he prepares himself on Saturday like a pro to be successful. And um, so, I mean, it, uh, there's high expectations. And, um, you know, we now are just focused in, because we're in game week, to eliminate those distractions of high expectations and focus on, what we have to do every day to be successful, to give us a chance to be successful on Saturday. I just wanted to ask one about the running backs. When it comes to DJ and Treshawn and maybe even Anthony, somebody else, how, how, what's the perfect way in your mind to divvy up carries in game one? It's a good question. It's just going to depend on, on uh, how, the, how the flow of the game's going. I'm going to let B.A. handle that. Brian, I think, is one of the best running back coaches in college football, and B.A.'s done this a long time. And, and you know, whether it's hot hand, whether it's uh, the plays we're calling, you know, Brian's got a great, great feel for what these guys really do. And, and you're right, there's a number of guys that can, that can – carry the football and, and protect and catch the ball out of the backfield. And so uh, I'll leave that to B.A., but B.A.'s got a good plan for it.